Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do a model off duty makeup tutorial. Um, just really an emphasis on good, healthy looking skin and kind of a soft, smudgy, like sultry daytime eye. So I'm gonna get started off by just uh, spritzing a little bit of the Patrick Ta Major Glow on my face. Why did I have to specify that? Of course on my face. Um, and then what I wanted to share is one of my favorite things, especially for this time of year, because I do have a lot of dryness like around the corners of my nose, um, some flaky bits from that healing blemish, and then some dryness around my eyes. So I've really been liking this Mario Secret Glow in Expensive. It's this clear balm and it's really tacky. So it doesn't move around. It's really nice, quite a unique product in my opinion. You heat it up with your fingertip, and this is supposed to be like a skin highlight, but I really like using it as a way to get more of like a dewy skin-like finish on a dry patch. So I'll even zoom you in a bit. So I'll really push it on the driest parts of my skin, which for me, my under eyes are so, so dry right now. So I just kind of really tap that right in. And I'm using such a small amount, you don't see it, but anywhere that I see like visible flakiness on my skin, I'm really pushing this in to create a barrier between my skin's flaky dryness and the makeup that I'm gonna put on top of it. It has this glue-like texture that really keeps the product in place without changing the look of the skin or the products that you put on top of it. If you don't wanna splurge on this, a great substitute would be um, Aquaphor, but Aquaphor moves around a little bit more. It's a little bit more slick of a product, whereas the Mario one is actually sticky and like I said, paste-like, so it stays exactly where you've placed it. I'm going to be using the Kosas Skin Revealer Foundation and the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I'm gonna mix them together so they're just um, one product. And just by mixing them together, you're gonna see that illuminator a little bit more versus if you just put it on underneath the foundation you get a little bit more bounce back and it's just gonna look a little bit more radiant and luminous. And I'm gonna blend this foundation in with a Kosas sponge. I actually really like the formula of this foundation. It's super easy to work with. It doesn't set down too quick. It blends out really nicely and the coverage is quite customizable. So you can wear it anywhere from sheer to medium and anywhere in between and it has a really nice, you know, natural skin-like appearance. I also really like the Kosas sponge. It's got a little bit more of a defined tip, so you can really get under the eyes. Popped on a tiny bit of eye primer, and I'm going to conceal and just like brighten up the under eyes. I'm actually gonna be mixing two shades of the Kosas concealer. I'm mixing 4.5N and 5W. So I'm gonna pop on a little bit of concealer just where I want to hide the darkness. I'm using the shade 5W and then where I want a little bit more brightening, I'm gonna use the shade 4.5. It's a little bit lighter and it's just gonna brighten up under the eyes a bit. So you can see it's just slightly lighter. And I'm just gonna use the heat of my hands to really massage and like, you know, blend this concealer in and just get it melted into the skin. I've definitely talked about this concealer in previous videos. It's such a good one. It's really quite creamy and it looks so good under the eyes, um, especially if you have a drier under eye type like I do. It's very dry skin friendly. I am gonna take my sponge and just softly, you know, blend it out. You do have to take a little bit more time blending out that Kosas concealer because it is, you know, on the creamier side, but it's so fabulous underneath the eyes because it really does just give you a little bit more of a, you know, moisturized, comfortable feeling concealer under there. And I also think paired with the Mario um, Balm, it just, it looks a little bit more flawless and I don't have issues with, um, you know, the, concealer kind of clinging to any of these dry issues, especially like around the nose and stuff. It definitely helps negate that like clinging look that I sometimes have. So now we can get started on the eyes and I really feel like the perfect palette for this look is the Charlotte Tilbury 
uh, super nudes. I think it's just such a practical everyday palette. So I'm going to take this um, taupey shade right here from super nudes and that's going to lightly get dusted right on the eyelid. Um, gently take it up into the crease and I'm just, you know, tapping it right on the eyelids and then softly blending it right when I hit the crease area. And then just on the other side of this brush, I'm going to take that light bone shade and I will use that to highlight the brow bone. And then what I want to do is put a little bit of shimmer on the eye just so it's not completely matte so we get different amounts of, you know, texture and you can see you know, just a little bit something special on the eye. So I'm gonna use Moonlight from Laura Mercier. And the way I like to apply these if I'm doing it on top of powder is run it on the back of my hand, pick it up on my fingertip and just lightly press and you can build it up as you go. And it'll just add that like extra special pop on the eye without overdoing it. But this um, Moonlight shade is also kind of like an oyster gray. So it pairs really well with that Charlotte Tilbury color. And you can just tap, tap, tap it right in place. Take a little bit of that gray shade and smudge that right into the lower lash line. This is one of my favorite eyeliners. It's from Jane Iredell and it's the shade Black Brown. So it's more intense than brown, but not as intense as black. And I think it makes a really pretty defining shade for the top lash line. And I just smudge that right along the top. And we're just going to smudge it out so it looks a little bit more worn, like you've had it on for a while. And it just looks a little bit softer, a little bit less, you know, precise. Just more of that, like, effortless vibe. We also want to warm up the skin, but still add some definition. So I'm going to use Benefits Hula. Now, this bronzer is matte, but you can still use it to, you know define the face if you want to do a little bit of a light, you know, natural looking contour, or you can use it to bronze up the skin if you want. It's not too neutral. It's not too cool. It falls right in the middle to where it's a versatile enough shade of brown that you can use it as you please. So today we're doing like a little bit of chiseling, but mostly just using this product to add some more warmth and definition to the skin. I also personally always take like a little angled brush like this. And I like to contour my nose just a touch. For blush, I'm gonna use one of my favorite like everyday shades. This is from Dior. It's the Coral Glow Blush. And I just think it's super flattering. A really easy, you know, blush that kind of like wakes up the skin, but doesn't look too overdone. Like you can see, you just get that little bit of coral tint. I just really, really like this color. I think it's good for this look because it's not too over the top, but you still get a little bit of, you know, some glow. To set the face down, I'm going to use the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder. It's going to give you a little bit more of like a soft glowy set. It's not going to be too matte. And I like how it gives you that, you know, like candlelit blur and just kind of softens everything out. For highlight, I'm going to use a Fort de France from NARS. This one's really unique. It almost pulls kind of like a soft seashell pink on my skin, which I actually really love because it adds just the slightest bit of fleshy warmth. I'm gonna use uh, Charlotte Tilbury's Brow Cheat to fill in my brows. This one's in the shade Black Brown. Anastasia Brow Freeze, of course. This is like the product that will give you that model, you know, like laminated model looking brow. Lashes are actually really important for this look because most of the emphasis is really on the, you know, bold statement brow. So for the lashes, we don't wanna like overdo it. I wanna keep them looking more natural and as soft as possible. So I'm going to be using the Lash Sensational from Maybelline. This has a really nice curved brush and it has those plastic bristles which give you a, you know, like softer, more clean, defined effect versus a wispy, lashy effect. And then for the lower lashes, because we don't wanna like overdo it or again, have the lower lash be too heavy, I'm going to use a special bottom lash mascara. This is Maybelline's um, Discovery, Lash Discovery, and it has this itsy bitsy teeny weeny brush, which is the brush for doing your lower lashes when you want them to look as natural as possible. So if you have smaller eyes, shorter eyelashes, or you find you always get mascara under the lower lash line, this is a really good option to check out. For lip liner, I'm going to use Wherever Walnut. This is from Makeup Forever. 
For lip color, I'm actually gonna use a cream blush. This is from Tower 28 in the shade Power Hour. It's kind of deep, but we're gonna smudge it out, make it look like a little bit more of a lip stain, and then top it with a nude gloss to just soften the look. I'm using the Pat McGrath Faux Real Lust Gloss. All right, and this is the finished look. I absolutely love the way that this turned out. I feel like you still get a little bit of like a smoky, defined eye, but it's really natural. I love cool toned eyeshadows. Whoa, I said that weird. I love cool toned eyeshadows right now. I think they're really flattering. Kind of like, you know, a little bit of a soft 90s eye look. And we really kept an emphasis on keeping your skin looking really nice and glowy. It's just a nice approachable daytime look. It's a little bit more elevated but like you don't feel like you have a distracting amount of makeup on for the day. So I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you have any questions about any of the products that I used in this makeup tutorial, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Um, and then I would love it so much if you would, as always, you know, subscribe to my channel, come follow me on Instagram and TikTok. And if you have any other specific makeup tutorials that you really wanna see some other types of looks that you're wanting me to recreate in tutorial format, Leave them in the comments, let me know. Um, but other than that, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching this one. Bye everyone.